Hello and welcome to the video. I was reviewing this study from the 1970s by George K. Hill and upon a closer look I decided to share this table and talk a little bit about it. So this is an estimation of the fuel or energy available in a healthy normally proportioned 70 kilograms men with a basal energy expenditure of 1800 calories per day. So in tissues most of the energy is in the form of stored fat that is 15 kilograms in this reference man which totals for a whopping approximately 141,000 calories. So there's a lot of energy value, there's a lot of energy value stored in this tissue alone. Think of how many days this normal over n normal weight, so not overweight, but normal weight person who consumes 1800 calories per day could go, could like survive using its adipose tissue alone and water of course given that other metabolic parameters are considered normal but even so we usually eat at least three times a day and if we skip a meal here and there we we think that we're gonna starve moving on there is also a lot of energy value stored in, in as protein in tissue. But as per Cahill, most of it it's already serving a certain function. So it usually it is not used for for energy purposes, for direct oxidation purposes. So liver and muscle glycogen or stored glucose are in trivial amounts compared to the energy you have stored as fat or protein. Now in terms of circulating fuels, here's a better view of Cahill's perspective which was provided and is provided by Alex Yartsev from derangedphysiology.com. So the fuel that's usually in the circulation of the reference man accounts for a very little caloric value. According to Cahill and Yartsev here, the circulating fuels account for 113 calories out of which 20 would be glucose, 3, would be, 3 grams would be in the forms of, of triglycerides and 0.3 or 10 times less than that would be in the form of free fatty acids. We are discounting protein here because of its primary purpose not being for fuel oxidation, especially if we talk about circulation. But even so, I'm not sure how, how they got the value for 20 grams of glucose being in the circulation because I couldn't find the details uh, for that in the paper. So let's do a simple calculation. Um, and if you find some inconsistencies, please do point them out. So let's assume a circulating blood glucose level of 80 milligrams per deciliter that is 100 milliliters of blood times about 5 liters which is 50 times 100 milliliters we have a value of a total of a total value of 4000 milligrams or 4 grams 
please excuse my artistic capabilities, or four grams of glucose. So then, this would account for 16 calories from glucose alone. For free fatty, for unbound free fatty acids, a conservative estimate would be 0.5 millimolars per liter or 2 milligrams per deciliter. Doing that like we did for the glucose, 2 milligrams times 50 would be 100 milligrams of unbound free fatty acids by more modern estimates, or that would be 0.1 grams of free fatty acids in circulation. Remember, we are discounting protein. The caloric value that's in circulation would be much higher if we account for protein, but as said, protein has the protein in circulation has a different use other than for direct oxidation purposes. And for triglycerides, the estimates done by Cahill would be approximately correct. So 27 kcals from triglycerides. So then you'd have 16 plus 27 plus this is times 9 would be times 9 so 0.9 this is the caloric value from from free fatty acids you'd have a 43.9 calories in circulation discounting for protein of course so my point was not to find inconsistencies in these calculations but that in storage there is about 166,000 calories as energy while in circulation there's there are there's much less energy value in terms of calories one of the points that Cahill tried to to make with his study was and here goes in summary man has only two major fuel depots fat and protein. Protein is serving as his machinery and efforts are made to spare it. Fat may serve more minor functions such as insulation or mechanical padding, but its function as an energy depot being its primary raison d'etre or reason of being I guess. Turns out that the function of the adipose tissue is not as minor as it was considered back then. Um, not only that it that fat has endocrinological function but it has other functions as well and this may be the subject for another time anyhow if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and subscribe thank you for watching